up? It's your boy I'm Z here. I'm in the house. I'm looking at this yard, man. Is this yard tightening up? Needs to tighten up a little bit more in that central area right there. So hopefully it's tightening up, right? Got to keep it cut. Got to keep it trimmed. We're going low this year. We're cutting it every week. Once a week, we're cutting this yard to keep it tight. Then I got to still ain't put. I had a dream, though. I was mixing up. The Coca-Cola, the beer. Ah, I dreamed I taste that beer too. Ah, nasty. Yeah, somebody gave me some rum cake yesterday. Nasty, nasty stuff, man. Can't do it. But I was out there cause it was sweet, right? I was out there cause it was sweet. And nah, I don't I don't want to do it, man. I ain't want to do it that. But anyway, guess what the day is? Today is Wednesday. Seeking Wednesdays. Seeking Wednesdays. That's where we kind of look around for more and more evidence of the truth in my life. Of the truth in someone else's life, what it looks like. Sometimes we can see the speck in somebody else's eye rather than the plank in our own eye. But now I want to shift that focus today. Instead of looking for the speck, I'm going to be looking for the truth. We'll be looking for the good, focusing on the good stuff. What good do I see? Yes, let's focus on what's good. What good do I see? This is the day of gratitude. The sun is shining. No, I was on my son. I said, Dad, I said, son, you butchered my yard last night. Ah, oh, man, I think it's, you know what? It's cut. You know, he said it was cut. Thanks. <clears throat> but I did. I thank him today when I get home. The yard is cut. The yard is cut, right? I did. I said, man, you butchered it. That's what I said. He said, I thought it was a little low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Son, thanks. Appreciate it. It's cut. That's what I got to do today. Because, see, the reason I did that, right, is because uh, I know in that evening time, I'm not as resourceful. My words hadn't been as impeccable then. It's because I'm tired or what or hungry. I don't know. I'm not. I've been noticed. I noticed that. So sometimes I don't do big projects, try to do it to a, a lot of complex thinking or have big, deep discussions with my wife or kids or anybody because it just don't seem to come out right. Those words don't. Because when that willpower go down, it's like that the reins kind of come off and the old beast try to come up and say things and do things. You know what I'm saying? Because I had a chocolate chip cookie last night, straight garbage. I had to go ahead and taste that. See? Yeah. Not eating that. I'm not eating that. This is not the best. If it was the best, okay, but it's not the best. So I'm not eating that. Not to digress. So I woke up this morning, <clears throat> obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be having this conversation. But uh, then I put in, of course, Matthew chapter 7. Asking it is given, seeking you shall find, knocking, and the door shall be open. Definitely on the seat portion, which is today on Wednesdays. So I'm just digging into it, listening, saying, hey, what about this? One of the things that kind of stuck out, what I'm, I got to do some more research on, and Pastor said it a while back, but I kind of forgot it. I remember the sermon that was at a men's conference. I don't go to a lot of men's conferences, but he said, the man who, who hears my sins and do it to him, I show him it's like, like a man that, uh, found, that uh, built his house on a rock. That's what it says in Matthew. But then over in Luke chapter 6, they expounded on it. They said that he who comes to me hears my sayings and doeth them. I'm going to show you what it's like. It's like a guy who dig deep and laid the foundation on rock. See several other elements in there. And pastors say, what was the foundation? key thing. What was the foundation? I 
think the rock is supposed to represent Jesus, the word of God, because the foundation is the other three. Common, hearing, and doing. It's the foundation. It makes up the foundation. But, you see what I'm saying? I know in building terms, a lot of times when people think of foundation, they think of the foundation as the rock. But he said they put it on a rock, and, and Jesus was saying that back then because that's what they did. That's what they do now. They have to find a stable place down there to sink these pillars onto the foundation. That's what they got to do. That's what they gotta do. They gotta they gotta do that. So I'm thinking that's it. The Lord just kind of bringing it back to me, but I want to read it and kind of go into some commentaries on that because after I read that, right, then I turned on my boy, Pastor Prince, and guess what he was talking about? He was talking about a biblical foundation. He was talking about the foundation of <clears throat> God's goodness, Mount Sinai under the law versus Mount Zion not under the law. The foundation of the word. He was, I know he mentioned that, uh, and I never saw it in that respect, that when Jesus was transfigured and he had, I think, Peter or somebody with him, he said, hey, Lord, let us build three tabernacles for y'all. One for you, one for Elijah, and one for Moses. And at that time, right, he said a cloud enveloped them. He said, I, I, I read this, but I ain't, I ain't thinking it was a correction. He said, this is my son. He ain't no prophet. You can't put him with the prophets. This is my son. This is the son of God. He's not a prophet. And I think that's what they said. He didn't know what he was saying. See, now I got a little extra context in there. And sometimes we kind of blend stuff together just because it's similar that it's the same, but it's not. You're talking, you could pan the creator with the creation. It's just like idolatry. That's what they say it is. You say, how can you make something with your own hands and then bow down and worship it when you are the creator? You say, yeah, that, that's, that's illogical. That's illogical. It's just like saying, I'm a, I guess you could, you know, in a business sense. Why did this guy stop? I guess in a business sense, if you hire somebody, if you hire a coach, but see, you can fire the coach, see what I'm saying? I know if you hire somebody to be your boss, <clears throat> I guess in certain contexts, I guess, you know what I'm saying? But most of the time, not. It's always going to be an element of authority there. So, today, day is laid out now I'm going to do my best I'm going to pour into others because it say be careful of what you measure because it will be measured back unto you and that's the key thing it's going to be measured unto you so if I pour into others others will definitely pour into me see that's why they slowed down it was on this uh on this uh, telephone, because they wouldn't have ran over that pothole just like that. See, they all off the road, pretty making their destiny safely in the name of Jesus. Yeah, but that's the deal, see? How I'm gonna measure it, how I'm gonna measure it. They said, you know, the more I put into a person, I don't, I don't lend, he said people lend to people that can pay them back. He said sinners do that. So you gotta be above the game land the people that you know you ain't gonna get paid back and trust that the Lord gonna take care of you. Our purpose is to take care of others and 
they trust that the Lord will take care of us. The devil flipping around. You take care of yourself and let God take care of others. <laughs> oh yeah, he twists the thing on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's twisted. Yeah, that's the thing you gotta notice. It's twisted. It's the same, but it just got a little poison in it. You know what I'm saying? It's the same. It's just got a little poison in it. That's all it is. That's what the guy was saying on one of the things between poison and medicine is the dosage. <clears throat> That's what he said. Poison and medicine is the dosage. But Pat said, how you measure the word? You know, do you measure with a teaspoon, with a cup, with a gallon bucket, with a wheelbarrow? It's how you measure. It's how it come back to you. It's how you... This amount of seeds, it's the quantity and quality. You go with the highest quality and the highest quantity, you're gonna get the highest return. That's, yeah, that's, it's logical, right? It's logical. Cause he was saying this guy, he was a beggar. And the beggar was sitting there and then, you know, begging for stuff and the king came by and said, look man, hey, won't you give me some money? You know, won't you pay homage to the king? So the beggar put in five coins. And then the king put in, dropped a few little things in his bucket. He said, thank you. Dropped a few things in his bucket. As you have sown, you shall receive. He got five, five, his five pennies was now turned to five gold pieces. Five coppers, five golds. Now he was thinking. See, because you, you didn't know. See, right? This is the deal. You didn't you didn't know how it was going to come back because if he had to put in 10, he would have got back 10. If he had to put in 20, he would have got back 20. If you knew it was a sure bet, how much would you put in? Now we talked about this good stuff a little while back. When you're supposed to double down and triple down, when you know that that person is not the place where you're gonna reap, that person is not paying you back, that you know 100%, if you get paid back, boom, it's coming from God. And once you see that that's a sure bet, hey, I know it ain't coming from this person, then you're supposed to go all out. That's what he said, you're supposed to go all out. That's what you're supposed to do. That's, what, that's the revelation I got. That's when you really, really do your best. Paul be doing my best anyway. Well, he say, then people do their best when it's for the best people. But when they say, man, like Pastor said, he said, man, he said, uh, he said, you like ties. And this guy, they said, you know, the God devil said, get this man a tie. This guy was, uh, he was blind. Pastor said, okay, I got some ties. I got plenty of ties for him. And then uh, he gave him a bunch of ties. And then he said, that the Lord said, hey, look, look. Now you give him that best tie right there. And then Pastor said he got carnal. He said, shoot, my best tie? He said, he said, he said, Lord, what does it matter? The man blind, he can't see the tie anyway. He can't even see the tie. He don't know what he getting anyway. Why well, I gotta get him my best tie? See, that's what the deal is. It ain't, it ain't whether that person appreciates it. It said, tell you thank you and all that, and you get the praise, the praise go to, from a blind man, what he gonna say? can't praise you that is a beautiful tie man this tie is awesome man i love this tie oh my goodness he ain't gonna do it you're not gonna get that gratification from that you can't get it so it's gotta come from god it's gotta come from somewhere else you can't get it from that person and that, that you know that's that's deep stuff right there that's deep stuff that's doing your best all the time, not, not when it's going to be noticed. You got to do your best all the time. A couple times, I, you know, I've been working on that because a couple times I say, shoot. 
I could not take this trash out, or I could not pick this piece of paper up, or I could not, you know, put this down there or put this over there. Because ain't nobody like cutting my hedges. Don't nobody see the back side of the hedges. I for a long time I wasn't cutting them. And I said, you know what? And even though nobody can't see the back side, I need to go ahead and cut them. That's, that's the kind of stuff. I need to go ahead and cut them. And I got another part of my ego I'm trying to get over to. I'm gonna go ahead and trim and trim the edges up. I was saving the edges. I was gonna transplant the edges. Instead of just cutting them off, I was gonna transplant them. That's what I was gonna do. That's my big plan. That's my big plan. So when y'all look jack, because I won't edge it. Cause I, I, you know what I'm saying? You're saving something, but you ain't using it. You're saving it. So it's just sitting there. That's the stuff right there. Because it's still scarcity. That's scarcity thinking right there, bro. That's scarcity thinking. That's scarcity thinking right there, bro. That's what that is. You know what that is? That's scarcity thinking. Grass gonna grow back and done did it 25, 30 times. Done did it already. But you need to trim it. Don't trim it. Trim it up. That's what I'm finna do. That's what I'm gonna do. Next time I cut, it get trimmed. It's gonna do it. It's got to. I gotta do it. Well, you know what the day is. We're we going to keep digging. We're going to read some more of this word, a couple of more chapters. We're going to listen to some sermons on that. We're going we're gonna to meditate on it. We're going to talk to the Lord on it. We're gonna take me a couple of walks. I'm going to do my best today and let the Lord do the rest, right? I'm going to do my best, let the Lord do the rest. Yeah, I like that. That's good stuff. I like it. Peace out. Do it to it. Let me put my boy AT in and get a little pump while I'm on my way in right now. Peace out. Do it to life.